Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from a sort of interest in life.com. You're joining me on board good old narrowboat Tilly and today we're going to have a quick look at going over the Turk Aqueduct and through the tunnel and generally have a chat about what it's like for the proper cruising season to be back in full swing as not only has winter mooring come to an end but we've had the double whammy of straight away that's led into the Easter bank holiday weekend and all of the half term school holidays for that as well. So my goodness me. It has gone from being extremely quiet to all of a sudden everybody, there's people on holiday, people on day boats, people on uh, proper week long, two week long holidays, there's all the private boats, there's, everybody is out on the canal at the moment. I'm amazed that I've managed to get this moment to actually record in silence, it's sort of dinner time at the moment so a few people have stopped for something to eat but I've actually managed to snatch a couple of minutes to actually record something without waving and rocking all over the place. Anyway, let's see less of this face and a lot more of what's out there on the canal. So then let's get stuck in. Here we are at Chirk Aqueduct and to give you a good indication of how slow it is to travel around on an narrowboat or at the very least to travel around on Tilly it's going to take us almost five minutes to just get to the other side of the aqueduct. To give that a little bit of general perspective, if you look at the arches of the viaducts up to the left hand side, that'll give you a little bit more sense of the scale, but basically this is the sort of area that by walking or on a bike you can absolutely zip across without, well, obviously you realise that you're going across it, but you know what I mean in terms of the actual time it takes to cross. And this is a good indication, as I say, of how slow I travel on Tilly, because here, because we're going against the flow of water and we've got this like channel of water coming basically against us, I've got the engine revving a little bit higher just to give us a little bit of an extra boost, and still we're going to travel this slow down here. There was a video I posted of doing the aqueduct crossing a while ago and there was a duck on the towpath which amazingly was actually walking faster than the boat itself was travelling and when a duck, something that's basically always on the water, is actually walking out of the water quicker than an entire boat, that's summing things up pretty well. Um, equally, I'm not sure why I'm doing such a ridiculous bouncy sort of Benny Hill run there, as you can see I was clearly on photograph duty but don't worry, the other other Dan was also on the tiller and at some moments you'll probably see him pop into the camera as we cross over. Well, it was his turn to go on photo duty. I really just wanted to post this video as it's been a long time since I've done a proper sort of uninterrupted boat trip of an actual proper canal feature such as the aqueduct. Don't worry, we're going to get to the tunnel as a second sort of bonus feature, but I won't leave the camera running as an entire trip through there because that would become extremely tedious. At least here you've got the spectacle of me running up and down the side of the towpath. Anyway, yeah, I just thought this would be a nice opportunity to show just one of the random features that you don't really come across every day on the canal, apart from obviously over winter when I was moored right by here and every trip up into Chirk and to the shops was basically including walking across here. The day that we did this crossing it was an extremely windy day and I can't explain just how windy it was. You might have seen at various moments the wind whipping across the surface of the water up here but as soon as you get to this sort of part of the aqueduct where you are literally just basically on a big pole in the middle of a valley there's no cover from the wind and the kayak started to lift up as if it was going to blow off the roof. There was absolutely all sorts going on just to give things a little bit more of a hair raising uh, effect every now and then but it was as I say with so many things with the canal and travelling these days knowing that we could moor up at almost any point when you get past the tunnel there's no proper sort of moorings for a while but even that when there's two of you even if we had to get off and drag the boat down the side of the canal it would have been over within probably 20 minutes tops it's one of those interesting things though, just looking at this here, I don't know whether it's just the sky and the weather conditions and the lighting, but it does it look to you as much as it does to me right now recording this, like some sort of oil painting, like the colours and everything, I don't know whether it's just the scene that's so sort of stereotypical and canal-like, oh there's other Dan on his photo duty. 
But as I was saying, there's something about this video footage that just doesn't quite seem real. It must be the colours involved. But I've got to say, considering that this is filmed on an iPod Touch on a camera tripod, it doesn't seem to have come out too bad. You can see every now and then there as well, where we're getting those random little bits of hailstone or whatever it is, maybe a little bit of snow blurring past the camera. As we're reaching the end of the aqueduct, and just before we get into the tunnel, I suppose we'll just have a general chat for the rest of the video. So, as I was saying, it is extremely slow progress, but it's not as slow progress as what I've been doing over this weekend, which is why this video might seem a little bit sort of slapdash and not quite up to what I would like it to be. I've been recording my audiobook of the first narrowboat book that I wrote, and my goodness me, that has been a challenge. I've done several uh, run-throughs as I'd re-edited the actual original book file itself and got that to actually have commas and full stops in where they should be. Basically, it was just comma, comma, full stop, full stop, capital letter, comma, comma, and it was definitely a long process going through that, but... As many of you may know from Facebook and Twitter and that, I've been at my nan and granddad's house while they've been away on holiday and I set up all of their furniture in their living room to create a sort of little soundproof booth and I've been trying to record this audiobook and I'm currently in the process of editing it and my goodness me, that has been some fun and games. Extremely long hard work. I'd recorded it several times out loud before I'd edited it just as a general run through to try and get me used to it but when it comes to actually trying to record something with no background noise and no uh, general weirdness in the way that I say things such as this video is absolutely full of random cuts and me not quite saying things in the right tone but it was it's well it still is being a very interesting experience I'm not sure if I will ever get round to making the second audiobook with the time that this first one's taking but yeah, I just thought I'd let you know if you're wondering why I might have been a little bit quiet and I've been falling behind even on uh, responding to comments on YouTube. It is because I've genuinely been trying to do something. So hopefully I will have an announcement on that extremely soon. It's all a case now of seeing if I can get it to be sold in the Audible bookshop or Audible audio bookshop and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, getting back to the actual moment in hand, you can see there, other Dan, he'll absolutely love that, having himself squinting right in the camera. But as we enter the tunnel, this is one of those things where it's definitely very handy to have two people because Tilly's railing on the back of the stern that some of you may have seen, which I've just realised there's no actual proper footage of Tilly herself in this video, so that's a completely useless reference if you haven't seen my other videos, but basically she has a railing that sticks up around the stern, which incredibly annoyingly sticks out further than the actual sort of top part of the cabin of the boat that this is being filmed on top of so when you go through tunnels so you've got this very tight arch coming and curving straight overhead here you can imagine that having something sticking directly up from the boat immediately starts to scrape into the brickwork and that then pulls you over into the rest of the uh, brickwork with the boat so having two people means that one of you can stay on the tiller and the other one can hold one of the fenders or one of the ropes to keep her from drifting into that wall and that was my job as you just saw me randomly jump across there and so I suppose now that we're heading off into the sunset or at least another bit of very windy canal after we get out of the tree covering I will say thank you very much for watching feel free to tune into my other videos there's over 200 boat videos online now of course there's plenty more than just boating there's biking and outdoor stuff and goodness knows what else feel free to subscribe if you haven't already feel free to add me personally on Facebook and Twitter or like the Facebook page if you want to see loads of photos and general updates from Life Afloat and of course please do consider helping me out by checking out my books available for the Kindle. Just search Amazon for the Narrowboat Lad or find links to everything just mentioned in the description below. Until the next time keep it boat worthy and farewell.